I am Robin Shute, four times overall winner at the Pikes Peak International Hill Climb. I'm going to take my race winning car away from its home in the mountains and try and break some lap records with it. But to do that, I'm going to need to change a few things. This video focuses on the invisible force that is aerodynamics and what I need to do to make my car fast down at sea level. What does that mean? Well, that means a lot less downforce and a lot less drag. More importantly is how we go about doing this. In this case, what we use is an online CFD service where we can run a 3D model of the car in its aero configuration and run it in a digital wind tunnel. And with this, we can get the information we require to go and modify it for this higher air density and higher speed circuits. In this case, I am using a tool called AirShaper. This thing is absolutely fantastic. It even allows a driver like me to go and run CFD and get useful results out of it. What's so neat about it is it takes all sorts of different 3D data, cleans it up and also meshes it appropriately so I can get accurate results at the other end. It does require some setting up. First of all, asking for a moving ground plane also setting the wind speed, at this case is 100 mile an hour, orienting the model in the correct direction into the wind, and also setting up the units correctly. That's the first step of it. Next we go and select the rotating parts on the car. These are of course the wheels, and in this case is important as it is an open wheel car on the front. And finally we also add the heat exchangers into this model. This service is really great because we can accurately model the heat exchangers if we get some accurate data from our supplier. In this case, PWR give us the information we, we require to go and put this in here for a correct internal flow through the car. From here, we actually go and run the model in the software and it outputs a result. Key things here are actually the numbers you see in the left-hand side, the simulation output, and that gives us drag, downforce and also center of pressure. Now visually you can see some drag clouds, you can also see pressure high and low, high is red, low is blue, and also a host of other things like streamlines, surface friction, also the flow lines over the body of the car, also noise which is a good indicator of very disturbed air and turbulence, uh, the elements which are the radiator cores and how they are performing, and finally, individual forces acting on the car. We can pick out each uh, wing element on the car and understand how much force that individual part is contributing to the whole of the vehicle, which is very important in this case because this is, is what helps us understand what is and what isn't working on the car. So the first thing I actually did was create a baseline of the Pikes Peak aerodynamic setup with all its big glorious wings to understand how we perform at Pikes Peak on the mountain. From there, we can go and set some targets of what we want to go and achieve with this new aero kit down at sea level. Now, what we want is less downforce and less drag, but maintaining efficiency. That is what's key here. And that's actually very hard to do when you remove wing elements on a car. The general shape of a car is a very bluff, body and it's quite an aerodynamic whereas the wings are actually very efficient now when you start removing wings you start losing efficiency in the car so what we need to do is be clever and remove the wings whilst maintaining the efficiency so that was the target I set myself was to maintain the efficiency of Pike's Peak but reducing the drag and downforce by around 20% Another key aspect I have to consider is ensuring that I balance out the car as I reduce this downforce. First thing I'm looking to do is actually remove the third element flaps on the front wing and that should give me the global balance shift I require from the front end to balance out with a new rear wing angle. The other thing I'm actually considering is how I can extract more performance out of the car by removing weight from it. I always love doing this, carrying things you don't need around, it just slows you down. So what I wanna do also is simplify the aero package on the car. 
So I'm going to try deleting the lower beam wing and reducing the size of the rear end plates at the same time and see if I can make this work, balance it out and maintain efficiency. What I found was the Pikes Peak rear wing end plates were actually rather draggy but generated a lot of downforce but the beam wing was incredibly efficient at generating downforce. So removing both of these I was left with a bit of efficiency to find in the new aero kit package. Now I was able to go and find this by adding a gurney flap back to the rear engine cover and this helped engage the floor which is an efficient aerodynamic downforce generating device. Finally I had to optimize the rear wing end plate design and this was quite a fun activity that I took into isolation to experiment with a lot of different shapes and geometries. What I found was in this case where I was not restricted by any rules a large end plate with a angled leading upper edge was the most efficient way to generate the downforce with that upper edge slant helping to generate another vortex off of the wing and that combined with the main plane rear wing vortex to generate a little more downforce. So what did the results say? I was able to reduce the downforce to 79.9% that of Pikes Peak whilst actually reducing the drag a little more to 79.2% meaning I found a little bit of efficiency. Importantly all of this was done whilst maintaining the front to rear aerodynamic balance. Another thing I have to consider when designing this aero kit is how I'm actually going to make the pieces. We are not a big budget operation, we don't have a lot of resource available to us, so we have to consider what tools are available that we can use to go and create these new parts. I like the old saying that says when you have a hammer everything looks like a nail, and in this case my hammer is send cut send. We use them to create carbon fiber parts which are essentially 2D with thickness and we get them cut out to the geometry we require to go and fit on the wolf. I also like doing this because it keeps the aerodynamic devices simple and these are less prone to being different to the simulations. We're not here to get the ultimate correlation between the 3D model and the real car that takes a lot of time effort and expense we're here to navigate around a rule set that doesn't exist and use our resource just to go as fast as humanly possible. And here we have the final aerodynamic configuration. How will it do? I don't actually know and we're about to find out. Key things I'm looking at is whether the balance of the car is maintained and then also is the downfalls and drag level we have selected appropriate to set these new lap records. I want to say a huge thank you to Wouter at Airshaper and also Send Cut Send for helping with this project as we go after some track records. Please tune in to the next one and consider subscribing so you can see how we do at these Gridlife Time Attack events. Thank you.